Okay. Hey there, Flat Earth family. I have been inspired to share my thoughts again. So, um, the other day, in fact, I think it was just yesterday, I lose track of my days sometimes, um, I had the privilege to talk to a fellow Flat Earther from Hawaii named Joey Rocha. Um, he's trying to set up some Google Hangouts and was just practicing and called me and I answered and we talked for maybe 10-15 minutes. Um, and I don't know if he knows this or not, but he is like a real motivation. Very, very encouraging to other flat earthers and myself included. And, you know, he um, motivated me to get on here and inspired me to share my thoughts again. So um, I've had, I have a couple theories that have been on my mind for a while. Um, but this one just kind of is like um, bubbling to the surface. I, I've been putting it off because sometimes we second guess ourselves and really all we gotta do is throw it out there and see what people think and maybe they can take it and run with it and add to it. Um, but I also, I don't have the kind of equipment that I wish I had um, as far as like I have a laptop that I'm borrowing from someone else and it's I don't it's very new it doesn't have all the software that it needs I don't have the editing software that I wish I you know could use to make videos in a certain way um, so I second guess myself sometimes and the topic I want to talk about tonight I've had all these ideas of collecting all this video and photographs to explain my theory however I still think, especially after talking with Joey yesterday, that I can convey my thoughts just by sharing them with everyone and then um, if someone wants to add pictures to it or wants to add to the theory, then by all means I encourage it. In fact, that's something that we talked about yesterday was the fact that um, you know there are two different kinds of people that claim to be flat earthers. Some of them want to be the first and want to they think they're going to get famous for the things that they think they're figuring out and the things that they're discovering and the excitement of um, feeling like they're the first ones to experiment or observe a certain thing and come up with a theory has just like gone to their head and they use that ego to um, squelch the experience of learning about our flat earth with everyone else and they kind of share that and push others to not go make observations don't do these experiments because I've already done them and they've been done and they're in the history books now and I'm gonna be famous well that's just malarkey <laughs> I think that everyone should go out there and think of theories observe the things that others have so that you have that experience to in your back pocket um, do the experiments because the more proof we have and the more numbers we have doing these observations and experiments, the stronger we will be. So, um, maybe to segue from that, uh, quite a, I'm, I'm trying to think of how long ago it was in, in the beginning of when Flat Earth was becoming more popular in Facebook and YouTube. Um, there's a gentleman named uh, Jesse Spots that came out with some theories on um, rainbows. So using the rainbows, he did some experiments in his backyard um, with rainbows and showing the public that his theory was the rainbows are proving that we have a dome and it's a, it's a reflective um, enclosure, you know, the top to our terrarium. I like to call it a terrarium. Um, and that's why we see rainbows uh, circular or semicircular, and that's why they're shaped the way they are because of this um, domed uh, structure that and that it's reflective, which I think is is extremely extremely fascinating. I loved those theories. I went back and listened to them again. He has a couple videos today just to kind of brush up on what he said. Plus, I don't want to um, re say what maybe he already thought of, and I'm pretty sure that what I'm gonna convey today is different than when than what he has said in the past um, but my theory does have to do with rainbows so um, it is summer where I live uh, it's the end of summer right now and uh, the summer season we always grow a garden every year and I'm usually real proud of my garden grow usually I have two to three gardens and I grow all kinds of different vegetables this year I only have two 
different gardens. Um, and then we do a lot of canning and try to preserve them or freeze them or dehydrate the vegetables. Um, saves money, plus it's just fun. And we do um, organic or heirloom seeds, and then we let them those plants go to seed later and save the seeds for the next year. Well, I was out this summer um, uh, watering the garden, and when the sun is exiting, and over the summer it's kind of exiting farther north, northwest, um, the way the sun angle was reaching me, as I was spraying my garden, um, I could create a rainbow. A lot of us have done that before. Um, it's pretty it's pretty cool it's fun take your hose out there and be in the the right angle with the sun that you can create a rainbow I mean, it's it's just gorgeous and it's really neat um, and I'm out there making these rainbows in fact I posted pictures I don't remember exactly which day it was um, and I had a video too um, but um, what I found fascinating especially during this time of year because we were getting a lot of thunderstorms as well because it's summer and I absolutely adore thunderstorms. I love to do time-lapse uh, photography and videography of the storms and the clouds. I've never done one of a rainbow before, although that would be just a um, highlight of my day. But I have taken a lot of pictures of the rainbows and gotten quite good at predicting when they're going to happen. But what I noticed when I was um, watering the garden was that it didn't matter how big or small I made the spray coming out of my the hose it didn't change the circumference of that rainbow and now what it would change is you could see little sections of that circle but no matter what I did to make more water or less water come out that circle stayed the same size so hear me out as I try to explain this um, <clears throat> We see then, of course, rainbows happen when the sun is at a, a, a good angle um, and it's shining through the moisture coming out of a thunderstorm, especially when the thunderstorm is like past you and the sun comes back out. It's just a, a gorgeous thing to witness, especially when you can predict it and you go out and watch and then you see this rainbow appear. Um, from what I've studied, the most thunderstorms um, create themselves between 25,000 feet and 60,000 feet. The, uh, the clouds build to between those two distances. And when you see a rainbow form after it rains, sometimes you'll just see a small section of it, just a tiny little section. Sometimes you'll see the whole um, half of a circle, the whole arc, which is absolutely gorgeous. But no matter what, that rainbow stays the same size. Does it doesn't normally matter, you know, uh, if the storm is building bigger or smaller, that circumference of that rainbow stays. Um, what we also notice sometimes, uh, things like, I don't know if many of you have gone to Niagara Falls, but you can climb up into, um, I forget what the tower is called in Canada, you can look down into the falls, and when the sun is um, closer to us and it's right above our heads, the sun light is coming straight down onto that moisture that's being bubbled up from the waterfall and that waterfall is only I think that's 167 feet in Niagara Falls so say the moisture could be around 150 to 300 feet the the moisture that's billowing around Niagara Falls and you see a moderate sized rainbow and sometimes you see the whole circle because the angle is different so <clears throat> I'm not a mathematician I, I'm not good with angles and triangulations and calculations and numbers but someone out there is but my theory is that um, could we be able to measure the distance to our Sun by using things like these rainbows that are being formed because from what I've noticed that it doesn't matter quite as much the amount of moisture that you're using that changes the size of the rainbow. The size of the rainbow seems to correlate more with the distance and the closeness to the sun. So you have these thunderheads, these thunderstorms that are building 25,000 to 60,000 feet up and you get a bigger rainbow. You have Niagara Falls, which is only a couple hundred feet up, and you get a very moderate sized rainbow. Because of the angle, you can see the whole circle oftentimes, which is awesome. And when you're down on the plane, like me, only five feet 
off the plane and you're using this hose, the rainbow is even much smaller. I don't know if there's anything to this, but it's gotten in my head and I kind of wish there's a way I could prove it. Um, there are other other um, aspects that might be able to help us with measuring the distance, things like uh, when you see, unfortunately, when you see the chemtrails creating like a chem soup in front of the moon and also in front of the sun, we can see uh, like a sun halo or a moon halo or moon bow they call it or a sun bow which looks like a perfect circular rainbow um, it looks like it's going around the sun but I don't see that it's that high it's usually just we're seeing it on that thin thin cloud of chemicals unfortunately but could that could those uh, you know neg the negativity of a, of a chem cloud or a chem soupy sky be used to measure the distance to the sun as far as the size of that rainbow or that circle. Um, I mean, this is going to take a little bit of work because if we start jotting and documenting when we see rainbows, if there's a way to document their size, um, I'm sure there's ways to document how high a thunderhead or a cumulonimbus cloud is building for a storm. Um, I know that they can measure the distance around like a circumference of a storm I think they're normally 10 to 15 miles around average ones some get bigger some get smaller I'm just thinking could there be a way to triangulate the distance to the Sun and is that what is changing the size of these rainbows and I know there's another factor that people are going to throw in there because you know maybe it is just the amount of water or the amount of rain that is involved but when we're seeing this, we're also seeing a change in the distance and the height. I mean, when I'm on the ground, the rainbow's smaller. When you're looking at rainbows in like Niagara Falls or other waterfalls that are only a couple hundred feet up, they are uh, smaller, moderate sized rainbows. And when you see rainbows in thunderheads or big thunderstorms, they're huge. Um, and then when you get to seeing the chem trail halos, they're even bigger. In my mind, that's even bigger, but it's very hard to, um, calculate that. There's another phenomenon that people see sometimes when they're flying, either piloting a plane or flying in a plane, and they're flying above the cloud cover. Let's say they're going 35,000 feet. Um, when the sun is behind them and shining in the clouds uh, below them, people have seen circular rainbows on the clouds. They call them glory. If you look up glory uh, rainbows on clouds from a plane, you'll see pictures of these circular rainbows. There's another factor. Maybe we can use that if we get pilots involved. Maybe we can use the circumference of those glory rainbows to try to help try to help narrow down, you know, maybe the distance to our sun. These are just thoughts that I'm putting out there. Really hope somebody out there can kind of take these ideas and maybe run with it. I don't know. Um, but like I said, it's been weighing on my mind. I wish I could have done this so that I could have shown you, you know, pictures of rainbows and the different ones, um, the different ideas that were going through my head and the rainbow at Niagara Falls and things like that or the video that I had of the rainbow. But you all know what rainbows look like and you've probably played with a hose outside and made your own rainbows. Um, but it's something to start thinking about. So uh, I would love, you know, all of you, all of your opinions. Um, I know there will be trolls out there that are going to say rude things, but thats they're just a reflection of themselves. It doesn't do anything to me. Um, but I really, really appreci appreciate all of you that watch, that, that give me good comments, and um, appreciate where my head's at and my ideas, and motivate and encourage me to keep sharing. You just never know, just like I was talking with Joe the other day, and I've talked with other Flat Earthers, you never know when you're going to share something small like this that's going to resonate with someone and they're just going to get it and run with it and it, it may become a huge discovery because someone started the spark, you know, the spark that caused a, a huge flame. Um, I do encourage more of you to get out there and try to start doing like hangouts and Skype calls and communicate with each other. If y'all are upset about division and things going on in in the community, I think a big thing that would fix that is start getting to know each other, like really getting to know each other, like talk to each other. I know that this is just the internet, but 
talking to each other and seeing each other's eyes and your facial expressions and not just being this warrior behind a keyboard will make a big difference. And, and you will learn to respect each other differently. So I encourage it. We're going to get overwhelmed and our information is going to saturate YouTube. It already is. You're not going to be able to keep up with everything that everyone's saying. But don't let that deter you. Get together. Do the hangouts. Talk amongst each other. Find out where each other's heads are at and communicate. Make friendships. I do encourage it. Uh, I want to thank Joey for the conversation yesterday. Like I said, thanks for the encouragement. Um, and I do want to do a shout out. And I, I wanted to do this last couple times I did um, these video logs because I, I'm not just on YouTube. I, I run or help quite a lot of Flat Earth Facebook groups, but my Facebook group baby would be a group called Flat and Happy. So I just want to do a shout out to all of my members out there in Flat and Happy because you know I'm going to probably share this in the group. And I just want to tell you all that I just absolutely love you and adore you and you truly are my family. Um, and I, I never expected, you know, our group to be the dynamic that it is. It's such a safe place. There's so much brilliance and intelligence there. I love the communication and the comments and the, the shares that we have. I, I truly love every single one of you and I feel so close to all of you. I'd love to start doing more Skype videos and talking to more of you. Um, I'm only one person, but if you guys want to get start calling and talking to me more or communicating with each other more, just let me know. Let us know. We'll start um, you know, organizing things. But anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope that someone out there can take my information and make something of it, add to it, uh, give me some feedback. But until next time, and I do have other ideas that I want to get out there, I'm hoping that maybe my next video log is just, just going to be me sharing my backstory, me sharing um, how I got into the truth movement way back when I was eight, some of the experiences I've had when I was very young that taught me to question everything and taught me a different perspective on our world. And then I would like to share all the way up until I started questioning the shape of our earth and studying all this and sharing it with the rest of you. So thanks again for listening. I try to make it short, but I like to talk. <laughs> anyway, everyone, please continue to enjoy your flat earth experience and don't stop researching. Bye.